There is a house in New Orleans. It's called the Rising Sun. And it's been the ruin of many poor boy. And God, I know I'm one. My mother was a tailor. She so Coming to you from the mountain fortress of pop culture. You're listening to Time to Talk. Let me tell you, people are mean to each other, but no voices are as mean as our own voices are. Well, he was just 25 years old when he infamously auditioned for the hugely successful American Idol. Now, that was 13 years ago, but Andrew Fenland's appearance on the show remains a viral sensation, and it's a YouTube video you can always rely on to cheer you up if you're ever having a quiet or sad day. The absolutely disastrous audition has clocked up tens of millions of views, but it's also sparked ongoing and heated debate about exactly who was in the wrong. Did Andrew deserve the undiluted wrath of the judges or was he a victim of public shaming at the hands of privileged celebrities? G'day, Andrew. Good day. Well, that it was a very well-written intro. It's more than 13 years, but you're still getting requests from people like me to talk about this sort of almost notorious honestly honestly, it's it's weird because requests have happened consistently since then almost every day Mm -hmm. and i live in a reality where people don't like realize that there are that there is this bifurcated reality like between like my every day quotidian go to the store existence hang out with my friends do my job and this sort of secondary thing on the that is you know persisted through the memory of the internet and that people that random people see this thing it resonates with them and they feel the desire to reach out uh at the time you know i was a child of the 90s and I was very aware of this phenomenon, you know, like people would still talk about random characters in the OJ Simpson trial, like 20 years on and, or like, you know, there was a TV show about the lead singer of poison. I mean, God, it was completely like, who cared about these people? Right. I want to, I want to walk through this audition with you and and, uh, uh, talk it. Let's walk it and talk it, but I definitely want to get something clear. You're talking to someone who doesn't know, and most people listening wouldn't know the behind the scenes. So let's just clear this up right from the start. Was it all a setup? Were you acting? Was any of this choreographed? No setup. Staged? Were you let's... given directions on how to behave or perform? No. And is Andrew Fenlon even your real name? Like, what's the story before we even walk through? Okay, so let's talk about this. No, no setup. No briefing, no prior strategy. That was a stream of consciousness. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's that. Let's get that out. Second of all, yeah. So they take your ID when you audition for American Idol. It's not like you can really, uh, you know, go up there with some phony baloney name. However, I did try that afterwards at America's Got Talent and it did work. So I had this whole plan where I was like, oh yeah, I'll I'll create this alternate ego, which is exactly what they want. So I had this whole character named John G. Canone, who was like a a surfer, lived in Pacifica, California. And I went to a random America's Got Talent audition doing something completely different. And I made it a past a few rounds. But I was so like, there was just so much in my head that I think I kind of choked up at the last minute and I did not get through to the televised stage. And I realized after that, that, you know, this is kind of a shallow pursuit. Like, why am I doing this? 
<laughs> so, Andrew, I'm gonna we're gonna talk about you know the impact and what you did afterwards. I'm gonna bring you back. I'm gonna bring you back on track. We've we've cleared bring up back, the fact. Yeah. We're gonna bring you back in. So, we've cleared up that this wasn't an act at all. You weren't given direction. It wasn't a setup. Andrew's your real name. You went on there as yourself. So now we're gonna walk through this in a logical order, if that's okay with you, because that's the kind of guy I am. All what, right. So can you take us right back to the start of the day? When did you I think arrive? The right thing for me to, I think the right thing for me to do in this type of situation is to spin it back toward you. What, was you, what, what did you take away from that? You know, mm, if I you want to have that, a conversation with me, Andrew, it's got to be about your perspective, not mine. I'm very curious. Well, so. I mean, listen, man, yeah. my perspective, I got kind of a meta perspective on this sort of stuff. You know, like I, I you know, was very sober in there. And I saw that it was, I was, first of all, let's just establish something. I had never really seen this television show before. Okay. This is, I'm not the type of guy who sits around and is like, oh my God, like, you know, I don't even know the names of these freaking odd, you know, the people who, who, who are the people who won for the, won this thing? Like Ruben Sutter. I, I don't know. Like what song did he sing? I don't know. You know, I gotta be honest with you. I, I was in the dark. Okay. Perfect. And, so you didn't uh, know what you were walking into, but you auditioned number. Well, I knew this much, yeah. all right? So, like, I – let's just establish this. I was living in Michigan, and uh, I took some uh, illegal uh, – I took a, a LSD, which is a – you know you know what that is. And uh, I went to a bookstore, because those still existed back then. And I got a Rolling Stone magazine and I looked at the back of it and, you know, I'm pretty skilled as a musician. I can do a lot. And I said to myself, you know, this is weird. Like if given who I am, given my like age, race, you know, looks, all this stuff, the only way for me to get back in this magazine is to either be in a popular band, you know, the Bill Bird of Hot 100 or to audition for American Idol. And I saw a little bit of the American Idol auditions and I've always been quite a good singer. So I was like, you know what? I can, I can do that. That's not hard. So I didn't tell anybody about it. And I went through the, um, the incredibly crazy journey of the audition process there. Is this a one day process, Andrew, or oh, over a course no. of weeks? No, no. Okay. Oh, months. Right. Listen, that was season nine of American Idol, okay? Which was like, you know, in the past. But if you look at the Nielsen ratings, that was the, like, I think that was the most popular season of the most popular television show on TV. Okay, it wasn't the looming audition that was making him tense. It was the waiting. I'm starting to get the itch to want to get going. And the waiting. And the waiting. It's grueling. I just want to, you know, cut this stuff, man, you know? You're single, you're married, you have kids? Uh, no. Yes. Single. Yes. Totally single. You hear that, everybody? I'm single. All right, well, I'm going to send you anything else all we right. should know? No, not really. We got it all? All right, yeah. Covered? Good yeah, luck. I'm ready. Head on that way. Oh, I'm in there? You said you felt violated by the process that they put you through, you know, this before you even walked in the room. Why exactly did you feel violated? Well, because, okay, well, this is a good question. So now I'm going to talk negatively about reality TV. It was violating because what they present to you on TV is this very wholesome process of, you know, like people showing up at a stadium with their parents and, you know, they, they, uh, they target out these people. They present it as, to you as some sort of merit-based contest. And I can tell you with absolute certainty that it has nothing to do with that. Um, I felt that they wanted to know my fam about my family. They wanted to know about intimate details of my life. Like, you know, I, it was like an in open invitation to put things that had nothing to do with music or nothing to do even with like an artistic identity, 
uh, you know, out to the open with 14 to 30 million people watching. And um, what intimate details are you talking about? What did they want to know? Everything. I mean, I can go into this in terms of like, I think the best example of that would really happen to me the second time around more than the first. But, you know, they wanted to know everything about my whole family. They wanted to know everything about my past. You know, there's certain things like that, that there's certain things that I would like to rather keep private than, you know, make, um, make public. Can, can but, I challenge you a bit um, on that, Andrew? Yeah. So you, you, because it's a big call to say you felt violated and no one can, no one can argue with how you felt. Yeah. But is it when you're auditioning to become an international entertainer via this particular medium, is it really right. violating to want to know about you, about your family, about your living situation? I haven't heard any questions they've asked you that sounded violating to me. Yes, but let me let me grace you with a little anecdote here. So mm -hmm. what year did I audition? 2010? 2011. American Idol called me and um, they actually even called me last year to, to ask me to come back on TV, which is crazy, or a few months ago. But anyway, American Idol called me and um, where they were like, will you come and audition again for the season premiere? So they, they kind of wanted me to come back and do another villain stint. And um, of course I obliged because it was so thrilling at the time. And um, I went to New York. And when I got there, uh, I was really, I was really like pulling out all the stops and, uh, I actually had taken a lot of these magic mushrooms at the time. And I was, you know, I was just doing hilarious antics. I, in the middle of my interview with, um, Ryan Seacrest, I like gave him this cucumber, asked him if he was hungry or like, I don't know, like just funny, silly things. And the entire time they were really trying to coax me into a state of like anger or, or aggression. And I had been drinking this like Gen Mica tea. Have you ever had that before? It's like a green tea with like rice in it. Okay. And um, it was giving me this bad stomach ache. Right before my audition, I went into the bathroom. And I think that they thought that maybe I was like using drugs in there. Maybe they thought that I was doing something that was completely not okay in there, but they actually bust into my bathroom stall while I was on the toilet with a boom mic and a camera that was going out to, you know, 13, 14 million people. And when I saw that, I got up and I said, you know, you should be ashamed of yourself. This is not um, the way you treat another human being. I mean, it's just sim simply said, I, there was nothing that I could have possibly done have done to warrant that type of aggressive, um, disgusting, ex exploitative behavior. Just to make it clear to the people listening, you're not talking about the original audition here. You're talking about Listen, the subsequent. Listen, I came back on that show directed. several times and it never went to air. Okay. Yeah. Did you they know. tell you why none of those subsequent appearances aired? They have no reason or no. Listen, I was going on there pro bono. You know, they're not paying me. There's no contract that makes them tell you why they did X, Y, and Z. And a big part of that show has to do with this concept of schadenfreude, which is like laughing at people who, and, and their inability to sing, or, but even more than that, just their, their, their being, laughing at their being, which I think is a bit of a base level type of humor. And I think that it's predatory to a certain extent because these are not celebrities. These are just normal people. They promised them the chance of a million dollars. They've promised them a chance of like worldwide success. If you if 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 you describe it as a violating experience, the obvious question is why did you choose to go back? Well, for one reason, got to be notoriety, doesn't it? It's got to be notoriety. For one reason, listen, man. I'm not saying I'm the smartest person in the world, but you know, I'm not dumb and I know how to use notoriety to my advantage. Should I, should I need to, I think that it was a stressful experience because I was basically laying myself out and saying, edit this any way you want to make me look as bad as you want. 
when they when they aired this thing, man, they put me on the advertisement like block for the Orange Bowl, which is one of the most watched television shows all year, and said this is like the most arrogant American, you know, uh, idol contestant ever. Listen, for the rest of my life, people are going to be saying, I don't know about this guy. Like, he he was so rude. He was so arrogant on TV. But I knew that if I came across in a certain way, it would bode well for me in the end. And okay. if there's anything that anybody listening can take away from this, you know, sometimes everybody's wanting, they live their lives wanting to have people pat them on the back, congratulate them give them their roses, as people say now, like, you know, everything that I've ever gotten in life has come from people telling me no. It's really like, there's a lot to be said for holding your own in the face of adversity. Because at the end of the day, all human beings are animals. And we respect those who do not show fear. I want you to cast your mind back now. In the video footage, it seems like you are absolutely knocked off kilter when you're finally called to enter that audition room. That's where I'm taking you now, Andrew. You seem totally yeah. surprised that the moment has arrived after all of that waiting. I was taken by surprise by the fact that I had spent three days, you know, auditioning for this thing spread out over the course of many months. I drove 10 hours to go to the stupid audition, got a parking ticket. And when I get there, I show up in this room they put me in a line of different people wearing chunky glasses. And I knew that they were only pick, gonna pick one of us to go on TV. And when I saw that there were other people in the room that they had done home stories on, I gotta be honest with you, I felt bad. I was like, well, you know what? I'm not a good cat. I'm not, my home situation is not the type of thing that it makes well for, it's, it's a good, it's good for TV. You know, I, this is, I was going there hoping to showcase my talent, not like my family story, you know, like I felt really pissed about that, but then I was considering just like walking out of there and I said, no, I'm not going to walk out of there. I'm going to give them what they want. So instead of just sitting patiently after seven hours, I just go I walk up to the producer. I'm like, Hey, I've been waiting here. Chop, chop. Let's go. You know? And one thing led to another and when it kindly finally came time for my audition, they had no idea what to do. It was almost like no one had ever done that before. Everyone had been so, you know, like treating these people for whatever reason, like they were these kingmakers, like holier than thou, like, oh, like, I, not, it's not even the right expression. They're treating them with, with their, 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 the beholden to them. You know, they're just going to go and, and do everything they ask for and just and just beg for their beg for their um, adulation. I mean, give me uh, a you break. didn't you didn't. So even I don't before, let's, I still let's, don't Andrew, care about let, that. Let's just get this clear again. I'm following yeah. a logical timeline before you even went in. You're saying that you were standing up for yourself and saying, look, this waiting and this um, the way Listen, they're doing a cattle call. I'm a better musician than every single one of those fools. I don't need their approval, okay? I don't. I, it's not even like a thing. Like okay. I'm on a totally different level, okay? okay. So let, like let, whatever. Let, let's let's pause and let's move to this part. Inside the room, you've got these extraordinarily accomplished people assessing you. They are assessing you. Even the way you walk in, certainly the way you look, the way you present, they're judging your marketability. They're judging your sex appeal. No, man. And your they're judges... judging what suits them. You give me, okay, the people that are the most successful from American Idol, most of them were people they rejected. You know, you're telling me, what? okay, what is Scotty McCreary? Did you buy his CD? I don't think so. That was about them. It wasn't about the contestants. Come so let's, re let's revise. Your judges in, in your particular episode are Cara Diaguardi, Victoria Beckham. Who is that? Who is Randy that? Randy Jackson. Can you tell me who that is? Because I don't know who that is. She's a great you know? songwriter. She's a great songwriter. She's written Are you a for, fan for of Cara Diaguardi's songs? Because I'm going to call a liar right now. Uh, I am, actually. I'm a fan okay, of Okay, Give, the, me, the give she, me one song that she wrote that you love. Uh, the one that she did with Pink. And I think it's called Drunk or something like that. Fantastic was she on the songwriting song. team? 
Did she yes, write she, that song she, she wrote it with Pink. She wrote it with Pink. So, Andrew, just, just stay with me here. And Simon Cowell is also on your particular panel. I'm curious to know, as you walk in, after all that waiting, is it an out-of-body experience, that moment of walking in? Is that quite a momentous time as you walk into the room? Not for me, man. No. Question number one comes from Simon Cowell. And it's a fairly innocuous question. It's, why are you here? And you reply, I'm here auditioning for American Idol. It should be fairly obvious. Yeah, well, that actually came from, um, I had a friend who played the bass clarinet, right? Mm. And another friend who uh, also played the bass clarinet. And they both played this instrument, which is a very weird instrument. It's a very unusual instrument in a, in a sort of quirky and dissonant way. And I asked one of them, you know, do you like uh, Eric Dolphy, who's the famous bass clarinetist? And he said, no, I don't like Eric Dolphy very much. And then I asked the other guy if he liked Eric Dolphy. He's this guy from Chile. And he goes, yes, that should be fairly obvious. So I sort of, I have to, you know, that's where I got that from. Um, and it was sarcastic though, wasn't it? It was playful. You know, I don't think it was like, uh, you know, I wasn't trying to trick him or something like that. I think that he ultimately understood where I was coming from. It's interesting because I, I, th- I think I think what you've touched on there is a bit of a theme throughout the audition around this, the way you felt you were playing and the way it was being perceived. Let, let's exactly. move on. So Simon continues, what brought you here to audition? And you reply, I don't think it's that interesting of a question. <laughs> okay. You want to know what's going on there? Mm-hmm. I'll tell you everything. So let me ask you something. If, and this is a question for you. So you're trying to, um, you, you're cold calling someone. You're trying to, you walk up to a random person on the street, random person on the street, and you say to them, your goal is to get a minute of their time. Your goal is to get their attention. What is your approach? Humility and authenticity. And one of the criticisms of, of you, Andrew, was from people that I've read comments and people who knew you from school and people who seem to know, they say this, they all say this, he is fucking talented. Yet you blew it in that room because of the perceived arrogance. So my answer to you is authenticity. Were you authentic in that room? Man, I I can't answer that question. I mean, that has to, that's, I wasn't even thinking whether, about being authentic or not. I was really just, I was just riffing, man. Am I being authentic right now? Like, I, it's a strange, it's a strange thing to say. I'll tell you this much. If I wanted to get a million dollars from someone who was walking down the street, or if there was a beautiful woman and I wanted to get her phone number, if I walked up to her and I said, oh my God, could you please give me a million dollars? I would love that. Ah, oh, you have no idea how much I want that. I think that it wouldn't work, okay? And I, what the main thing that I was trying to communicate in that moment to Simon Cowell is that, you know, it was a two-way street. If he wanted me to bow to him, he had to show me respect as well. I wasn't going to be like all these other people and just go shove, just get shuffled through their, me- you know, mechanical filtering process okay like and i i'm sorry like in that case it wasn't even like coming from a standpoint a place of anger it wasn't coming a place from a place of anything besides like you know he asked me why i was there what am i supposed to do puff out my chest and be like i'm here to be the next american idol literally i answered his question i was there because I was there to audition for the TV show. I was there to be on TV and sing. That's why I was there. And what's your name? My name's Andrew Finland. Andrew. And why are you here, Andrew? I'm here auditioning for American Idol. Should be fairly obvious right. at this point. Okay. Also, like, waiting around. <laughs> okay. Um, I think you know why I was asking the question. What, what brought you here to audition? What brought me here to audition? I don't think it's that interesting of a question, actually, but Andrew, I think... Andrew, yeah. Andrew, I'm going to just warn you now. If you okay. want to carry on being a smartass, you can leave the room. Oh, I'm not being a smartass. So ass. either answer the questions okay. or leave. Okay, no, I'll answer the questions. I'm going to answer your questions. I'm sorry, first of all. 
Okay, what are you going to sing? I'm going to sing House of the Rising Sun. You know that song? I'm just, okay. All Andrew, right, you are really pushing this. <laughs> no, I, all right. I'm just going to sing it. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to push any buttons. All right. Okay. Here we go. You're a guy who's walked in to an audition. One of the people on that panel, Simon Cowell, has signed One Direction, among others. He's reportedly worth around £350 million. Pounds. He can make or break careers. You're a nobody trying to prove that you've got an iota of talent. And what comes out of your mouth? It's sass, sarcasm, and it's encapsulated in a tone of irritation and weariness. I will tell you something. That man voted in my favor. Ultimately. And what did I say on TV when he did? I thought you and I were going to get along. I knew. I knew. Let's let's keep moving through the audition. Simon okay. actually Simon pulls you up at this stage and he says that you basically you need to sharpen your attitude or you need to get out and you apologize. It's quite an awkward apology. And you haven't even started singing yet. Where were you at this stage? My plan was to not have things escalate. You know, mm-hmm. I was really you know, I was just going to be a little frosty, but like not rude. You know, I wasn't trying to escalate anything. I literally did not think he knew the song House of the Rising Sun. I was used to being people going up there and singing things that were not of that era. That is a traditional American folk tune like Alan Lomax kind of thing. You truly felt that Simon Cow. Because it sounds to me like you're communicating directly with him now. There's three other judges, but you ask Simon Cowell if he knows The House of the Rising Sun, one of the most famous songs in showbiz. Oh, okay, listen. That's, a, that's a, some hyperbole there. There are mm-hmm. so many songs in so-called showbiz. I mean, we're talking about, what, do you, what era of showbiz are you talking about? Are you talking about like vaudeville? Are you talking about 2023? Listen, man, there's a lot of music out there. No one is saying House of the Rising Sun on American Idol before. And I can tell you another thing, the songs that they sing on American Idol, like I actually pulled that out at the last minute because they have to get those things cleared through some sort of like- Copyright. Copyright thing, man. Like it wasn't like the kind of thing where when I said that to him, it was also probing to see like whether they would even air it because I told them I was gonna sing something else that I knew that they had license for. When we were there, like, we had to, like, take all the labels off our clothing and, like, you know, it's not like, it's not like you can just go in there and sing whatever you want. And, like, I think that also there might be some sort of kickback thing, too, where, like, if somebody sings some sort of song, then they know the person who gets the royalty for it when it gets, when it gets, um, I mean, maybe it doesn't get kicked back, but maybe it's sort of like, oh, well, we want this guy singing this song because when it gets aired on TV, the points go to my friend, that kind of thing. Then you start to sing. And as you say, it's the House of the Rising song. Now, Andrew, this is probably the most contro- well, one of the more controversial moments on social media because although the judges end up smirking and they say your voice wasn't up to scratch, most people who are leaving comments agree that Andrew can sing. What I did you think sing, about man. the... What, what did you think about the actual singing part of your audition before we move through the rest of it? I'm Honestly, curious. Honestly, I was when so you watched shook it back. by, I was so shook by how aggressive the judges were that I felt like it broke my cool and I couldn't, I wasn't singing quite as well as I should have been, but I think that it was fine. I mean, mm-hmm. like, to be honest with you, like I sat, I was back there and this guy who auditioned before me was awful, like totally not in tune, like all over the place, song was corny, and they were just like, wow, you're so handsome. You could be a singer-songwriter, go to Hollywood. That fool did not get on TV. And you know, when I was when I was um in the stadium, like I there were these three girls from Haiti. Who I was, who who I was auditioning right after, and like they were so good. They sang in like this amazing three part harmony. The producers came and said, you know, we asked for a layup and you gave us a slam dunk, so we're not interested in taking you to the next round. 
too good to go through. Is that, yeah, sorry, is that what you're saying? Too good to go through. Wow. Too good to go through. <laughs> How does that even make any sense? The only thing that I'm peeved at American Idol for is bringing me back on TV and taping me all those other times and never airing it. I would freaking love it if they finally aired the stuff that we shot. That cucumber you know? routine you did deserves to be aired. I agree. Now I'm going to bring you back on Somebody's track again. We're, we're, we're at the fun part now, Andrew. So you've, you've finished your song. The verdict is now handed to you. And it's fair to say that it was positively and uniformly uh, a pounding for you by the judges. Well, not What's uniformly. Go- uh, and actually, first of all, they, they edited it on TV. The verdict okay. at the end was actually split. When Simon approved... Randy then changed his vote as well, and he approved. Wow. But there was an ongoing like argument because Kara got very incensed. And I was trying to quell and just ease her down. Uh, Victoria Beckham, she was, in a, she was having a hard day. I don't really know what was going on with her, but she was sort of vacillating between saying things that were very inappropriate and like, just not really knowing what to do. And Kara um, had, had began this whole thing talking about how much she didn't like me. And then when, you know, Simon flipped it, she didn't know what to do. She didn't know whether she wanted to flip to his side or, you know, stand her ground. Ultimately she stood her ground. Then there was this guy who came in after me and he was one of the people that they had done a home story on. God, this is not that interesting of a story, but I'm going to tell it anyway. Whatever. He was one of the people that they had done a home story on. He worked on a fishing boat. Some dude from Boston that like went on the fishing boat with his parents and like la-di-da. He wakes up every day at 6 a.m. to catch these striped bass, you know, and he was going to go and sing this cutesy song and the girls liked him, but Simon and Randy were, Simon started, I guess, and he was so pissed off about what happened in my audition that they boycotted bringing that guy to the next round. They said, you didn't let us have our guy, so we're not letting you have yours. And this guy and his whole family, they wanted to kill me. Like they, the kid was crying. Like it was a, a mess backstage. And I didn't do anything to this to this person or any, you know what I'm saying? Like I was just a 25 year old kid well, was doing, it's, doing my thing, it's- man. Really interesting so, to hear that the the vote was more split than what comes across on TV. I'm again going to reel you back. I'm going to reel you back. Yeah. So just I, I want to know if you can recall what is going through your head as you're essentially eviscerated for your bad attitude um, and that your energy is just bad. What's you're going through your head as you before abs- Simon before Simon changed his vote or whatever? Exactly. So immediately after you stop singing. Okay, you want to know exactly what I was going through was going through my head? Exactly Please. what was going through my head was this. Something doesn't add up here. I felt that my behavior was a little bit petulant, but did not warrant the response that they were giving me. And I felt that I was shocked that they had decided to be so draconian in that moment to try to eviscerate me for just being a little bit, you know, prodding. I I felt like I had to do something to try to make them see that what they were saying was just a total, like, irrational reaction. Some what? Just from waiting. It's just- Well, you know, the thing is, you want to be in the music business, but you don't want to wait to get into American Idol. That, to me, seems to be a problem. And, you know, for you to have a bad attitude about that kind of pisses me off. I think you're reading it too far. No, no, I'm not reading it too far. Because you just told me that you were a little bit annoyed that you had to wait three hours to come in here and get your shot when there are people that would wait years to do so. So I am now angry at you who I don't like at all. Well, why are you doing this? So why why with all the attitude? What's the the problem? No, there's no problem at all. I I think that, I don't know why you guys, there's no problem. You walked in Mm -hmm. very sulky, quite rude, very aggressive, and you've got very, very bad energy. Oh, man. You do. Let's have a little conversation about this. 
<laughs> I wanna, I was trying to seem confident. Confident, oh. it came over the other way. Very arrogant is how it came out. And you know what, you don't have the goods to back it up. That's what I think is disappointing. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't agree with you. I think I do have the goods to back it up. Okay. I'm still okay. getting okay. that attitude. Car, car. Yes or no? <laughs> Andrew, no, I'm sorry. Victoria? No. Randy? Wasn't good enough today, dog, no. I would have said yes. You're kidding what? me. I see You're me. kidding. <laughs> He's starting to grow. You know what? I had a feeling. Oh I, I had a feeling oh that you and I were. Yeah, we started off bad, but kind of got to like each other. Well, I'm well, shocked you know what, by Simon? That. You have an attitude, but you're at least charming. In in the edit, Simon is smirking as you sing, as if what your no, performance is terrible. I, he was not smirking as I was singing in real life. Like that right. all these things are like out of time, time mm -hmm. like reconstructed in a way to fit a narrative. And mm. I was uncertain. Look, I knew that what I had done was fine. What I was terrified of is how exactly, how, to, to what extent, you know, I, I have a certain, there's a certain paranoia that I have even in this interview. It's like, we, we have this, we're having this talk right now. You could take my words and patch them together to make me say something totally outrageous. I didn't really know how, to what extent they would edit it. When I saw it, I really felt, like it was this amazing thing where all of this thought that I had put into, you know, sort of social dynamics and music and like, it was sort of like this crazy realization, apotheosis of like all, all of this, this mental stewing. I, I felt like, yes, I had done something that was controversial, but ultimately I liked it. And it was cool. Did Kara, despite maybe her tone and semi-hysteria by the end, did she have a point when she said that people wait years for their chance to prove themselves, yet you had taken exception with waiting mere hours? Yeah, I don't like that comment. First of all, I don't think anybody should take years to try to get onto American Idol. I think that that's a waste of your time. American that's Idol not her point, is, Andrew. Andrew, with yeah. with respect, that's not her point. Her point is that people try so hard to break into an industry. No, is difficult that was exactly and challenging. what she said. She said, she said to me, you know, you're upset that you had to wait three hours. In reality, it was seven and a half. So let's be real to get your shot, or maybe it was eight and a half. It could have been longer. I was there. So I got got up six in the morning, and it was like late in the day at that point. So you know, to get your shot when there are people who on American Idol, when there are people who wait years to do so. She's literally talking about waiting years to be on American Idol, man. Like, I don't think that anyone should do that. You know, this is a PSA. Don't do that. When you ultimately made that decision to audition for American Idol and you, you make it through all those stages and you're on arrive on that day where you're going to perform in front of the judges. Yes. Did you go into that room with way too much confidence and honestly speaking from the heart did you honestly think it was just a formality that they would all say yes and you'd move through to the next stage were you that confident absolutely i thought that it was just a formality and they were all going to say yes and be, and you know why because they all had a sheet in front of them which said say yes to this guy okay i had already been vetted by many rounds of producers to get to that point. That's not like they presented on TV, like you show up to some sort of stadium, there's 20,000 people and you get to talk to Simon Cowell and Randy Jackson. Hell no, man, that's not how it works. Like you have to meet the junior producers. Then you have to meet the second round of producers. Then I had to meet the executive producers. Then I got to go in front of them. And by the time that four different rounds of filtering like season nine, they had four different rounds and they were all taped, you know? And by the time I got to that fourth round, they had divided us up into categories where it was like, these are the people who are embarrassingly bad. And these are the people who have a decent voice. And you can believe that I was in the categories of people who are decently bad if you want to, but like, I think I have an okay voice, you know, I'm sorry. And like, I'm not saying like, those decent that those 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 embarrassingly bad people couldn't improve their vocal technique and like be be great or something but like and music is totally a subjective thing you know maybe they'd be able to make music you know with with that style of singing that would be killing you know that would be awesome but like so even 
even in this conversation, I can yeah. feel you've you've got a lot of confidence in your ability, and that's fantastic. And certainly, lots of people who know you talk to that, and they talk about how talented you are. Most people leaving comments say you can sing. Given all of that, and given that you've just acknowledged that you walked into that room thinking this is just a formality, what did it do to Andrew's ego when they knocked you back? Man, nothing. <laughs> like. N- I, I don't know. I don't, you know, there's a difference between having confidence and being egotistical. Mm-hmm. I think that especially as a performer, okay, like I don't think that, yeah, do I think that I have musical talent? Absolutely. Do I think that my music matters? No. Okay. Like, do I think that my, do I think that I'm better as a human being than anyone else? absolutely not do i know my scales do i know my chords do i know my you know do i know how to sing melodies in tune do i have ideas of what my vocal fach type is do i have ideas about you know how to orchestrate for a saxophone section of course i do because i love music and that's been a passion of mine since i was a little kid you know yes i know a lot about music i can write a song i can write a symphony anything Okay. That being said, do I think that my music is inherently great, amazing, good? That is up to the ear of the beholder. It's not up to me to decide. So all so I when can people, do when when people Andrew say that yeah. you have this huge misplaced ego, that's just not the not the case. No, it's not. I can tell you that I I if you tell me, if you put a gun to my head and you say, like, dance a merry jig, that jig will be merry, okay? I know how to do it, okay? I'm not, like, trying to say that I am the greatest thing since sliced bread, but I put a lot of time into certain elements of music, and, you know, because I like it, it's, it wasn't really like, I'm not going to say, like, oh, it was, I put in the work, Ugh. You know, it's, it was never work. Music has never been work. I just like it. I think everybody should like music. Yes or no's to this. Have you got looks? I don't know. That's totally a diff. That's, I don't know. Who knows? All right. Different question. Have you got charisma? Yes, I have. And, you know, honestly, I took a, there's this, there's like a DNA test that I took and it said that I have this very rare gene or lack of they call it the public speaking gene where like my heart rate doesn't go up as much as a normal person's does under times of stress. Genetic testing proved that? Yes. And I mean, I can look this up right now if you want. I got a computer right here, but no, 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 you know, that's okay. That I think that in the case of being on like a television show or like, uh, you know, anything, that is like that i don't get embarrassed and i don't uh i i have the ability to be have a natural charisma in that sense i mean charisma is a hard thing quantifying charisma is like judging music you know that again that's like up to the ear of the beholder it's not really like the type of thing but if you ask me on a binary do i have charisma i would say yes i do okay there's a point in this audition when Kara says to you that you need a spanking. Do you remember that? Yeah, I couldn't believe that. <laughs> it was like, it was like, she's like eviscerating me and then she's flirting with me. And I'm like, yo, you are just, you are just going wild right now. I, I don't even know what was going on with that. And what do you think would have happened if Simon had, had made a had similar asked comment? Me if I needed a spanking? <laughs> either to you or to a female contestant perhaps oh that's a great question first of all okay so like here's something to talk about I, i'd rather talk about it from this angle right like you know you've asked me all these questions like how dare you say this and blah 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 if you had simon on tv you know you could talk to him about his behavior in in you know for hours i mean like have how many different times has he acted unimpressed or underwhelmed by 
a contestant who all the other judges thought was amazing and, you know, said something that rubbed people the wrong way. I think that Simon is an interesting TV character, just like um, that guy on Shark Tank, Mr. Wonderful, or like, it's this reality TV character who's, who thrives at, in the villain role, and he's really there to spice things up, you know? But, you know, even weirder was that uh, uh, Posh Spice, she said to me, you know, I didn't have a girlfriend at the time. I obviously I've had girlfriends. She said to me like, uh, "You've never had a girlfriend, only a boyfriend." So she 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 was like calling me a homo, or you know, like in like an old school. Like that is really like. I felt like at that moment I was like, "Are you serious? Like you're gonna you're gonna go there? Like you're gonna say something like that?" You know, I really felt like these people we're not in touch with the zeitgeist of, of what, what young people were really feeling and thinking. Like mm. there was a, there was a serious gap there between the mentality that I had, which was much more about like pluralism, you know, individual expression, creativity. I felt like their thing was much more about like, Oh, like you're going to Hollywood. You're going to Hollywood royalty like all this like old world almost imp like cultural imperialism you know like gender role crap uh, it, it, yeah i mean it's 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 amazing how much times have changed i i can't imagine that flying maybe on fox i mean i don't know when you leave now they use these sort of slow motion techniques and they use these shots of you as you're escorted away and frankly, I'm going to be honest with you, they make you look a little bit like Jeffrey Dahmer or someone similar. Was it edited accurately in general? You've already sort of well, spoken about Well, I mean, everybody was... tells me I look like Jeffrey Dahmer. I mean, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, what, <laughs> well, what do you think? But in general, the, the editing was not fair, was it, by the sound of it? You've already said they've stitched things into places where they didn't occur and Listen, stuff. So the editing ed is going to yeah. suit them, man. Like, you're always you going to be the villain, it's, right? It's, I'm not the editor, man. I'm just up there doing my thing. Like they're going to, they're going to chop it up any way they want to. And, uh, you know, the, I was the villain, so they got to make me look mean or nasty or, or something. I don't know. And mate, w when you leave the room after this incredibly awkward encounter that you've had, you're met by the host and I assume it's your family. You seem utterly shocked at that point. Um, yeah, man, I, I was like, uh, are they your parents there with you? Um, no, those were some, some people who I knew to pretend that they were my parents to pretend. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want my real parents on there. So hang on. I you felt like, it was just, you know, I wasn't trying to do that for my parents or like, and I wasn't really trying to get my parents involved. I felt like they needed their privacy, you know, so it was really more uh, about me. Andrew, who, who, who set them up there though? You or the show? I set them up. I set it. Uh -huh. I set them up. I knocked them down. Okay. Fair yeah. enough. And, and but when you leave the room, talk to me about that. What, what's going through your head when you're sort of almost ambushed by the, um, the hosts, of course, who are going to ask you <laughs> how you feel it went. Um, yeah. Th tell me about that point. I was confused, man. Like I was like, okay, well, are they going to put this on TV? Like, what's the plan? Because that they seemed really like the whole thing with the spanking and like, I just felt like they were kind of losing their cool. Okay. And <laughs> while you're leaving back in the audition room, after you've left the room, the judges. That's right. That's where all that drama went down with that well, fisherman kid. Yeah. And, and while you're doing that outside though, let's give the listeners what was going on inside. Kara is they're all talking amongst each other. Kara says she felt like she needed to bathe after meeting you. Victoria Beckham called you hideously arrogant. So again, yeah. be honest. I, I, I'm. This is a bit of a left field question, but have women reacted to you that way before or since? Uh, no, not really. They were implying that there was some sort of misogyny here and sexism. They felt an aggression from you. Yeah, I don't know. They were reading it. To, I got a parking ticket and uh, I was kind of pissed because like 
they had told me like that the audition was going to be over. Like they, they started playing with me because I mean, to a certain extent, like I was like, I was trying to get back to my car because I didn't want it to get towed, you know? And they had told me like when I started complaining that the audition was going to be soon and but then they lied and their parking ticket was like $120 and it was just like, I was like, yo, this is getting like insane. Like they're really messing with me because they're trying to get the dramatic effect going. Do you, do you at least accept that was real? That's how they felt in your presence? No. I mean, like I said, like the thing was like edited to hell. Mm-hmm. And like, I think that Simon, like he really liked the vibe of it and she felt like she lost her cool. And I, I wonder if that was one of the reasons why she wasn't invited back the next season. Because like mm-hmm. she really got, I felt like she was being histrionic. Okay. And I think that he felt that too. Because she was so nervous about the fact that he flipped it and she was like, oh my God, what do I say? And what do I do? And la, la, la. And like, uh, it was just like, woo, you know, I I felt like I felt a little nervous up there, but not anywhere near as nervous as she did. Like you said, I mean, maybe she is a great songwriter. I don't know. But like, you know, she, um, I don't think she's like a public persona. You know, mm-hmm. and I think that putting Posh Spice on a musical judge show, like it's it's a little bit like she Posh Spice is cool. She's funny, you know, but like she's not known to be a virtuoso singer. So it's kind of putting her out of her element. And also she's not American. And like, what's up with this whole thing? It's American Idol. Like it's a British show, British judges like what? What? I'm going to reflect something back to you, Andrew. Okay, because people would people would have picked this up. Okay, you've just you've said at the beginning of this interview that you have respect for Randy, that you knew going in that Simon and you were going to gel. Yet the two females on the panel, one isn't talented and one is doesn't have the celebrity to be on that show. So you've been quite well. Wait a minute, I never females. said Posh Spice isn't talented, right? You said, said she's not she's a virtuoso. Funny, but I don't think she's not a virtuoso singer. Listen, I mean, how many, there's plenty of famous singers who aren't virtuosos. It's cool. Are you sexist? Am I sexist? No. Mm-hmm. I wasn't talking about their gender at all, man. I mean, why would I be construed as sexist? Like that had nothing to do with that. Like I said, maybe Kara is a great songwriter. I, I don't know her music. I, I, Listen, man, I'm not going to talk and say that Simon Cowell is some musical genius because I don't think that he is. I, I mean, maybe he is, but he, I've never experienced his music. So that would be a weird thing to say. I, I, yeah. I don't know if you know this, Andrew, but he was behind the Teletubbies. So he must be talented. The Tell, Tell, a Teletubbies is a weird show, okay? Like that baby <laughs> in the God, baby in the sun. Like, what the hell is that? You know? Hey, Andrew, like, how, many, yeah. how, many times, how many times have you watched this audition i've watched the audition quite a few times yes yeah uh, the first time i saw it was live on tv uh on january 17th that day that it aired other people remember when kennedy was shot you remember when you were watching that audition right how could you how could i not i mean that they had a um, were you on your own when you watched it no i was at a i was with friends um mm-hmm. <laughs> And, it must uh, have just like what was the reaction? It was I'm extremely nerve wracking, man. Like I was terrified. I felt like I was way more nervous watching the audition uh-huh. than I was doing the audition. What has this audition done to your life? Well, not much. I mean, like I, I feel like if anything, it gave me clarity about my own values. I feel like I felt like prior to the audition, all these fears about I was a younger person back then. And I felt that given that I was an artist, the most important thing that I needed to do was gain an audience, the largest one possible. And now that I've grown older, I realize that 
And through this audition, this, this had a lot to do with it. I think that um, something that was cool about it was that my audience was very much self-selecting. The people who didn't like what I did, they weren't the right people for me anyway. And like, that's sort of how it goes. You know, like if you want to please everyone, you're really going to please, you're really going to have an audience of absolutely everyone. Andrew, let me read you some of the comments that people have left uh, under, underneath the the many incarnations of this video that are all over the internet. Here are some of the comments. Uh, then I'm going to get your response. As someone with social anxiety, I felt so bad for him the whole time. He didn't mean to be rude. I get like that as well. Also, his voice is amazing in all caps. Uh, another comment, he actually has a good voice. Simon judged him on his voice, unlike the rest of the judges. This guy has a massive fan following. He's a talented singer and a legend. He needs to make a YouTube channel. He's the best. He thinks he needs a punk band around him. He needs his own sitcom. He's got character. And another comment, this guy is a legend. This guy is so funny. Very quick with his comebacks. I have an anxiety disorder. I can't imagine waiting for several hours to audition under all that stress too. Andrew, you killed it. You were just under pressure and you at least apologized. Now, for the listeners, I didn't select only the positive comments. I literally read them in a particular order to try to be as neutral as possible. All those comments are positive, Andrew, about your talent, about the way you handled yourself on the show. I just want to ask you about this. It's quite a serious point. There was a lady in the UK who auditioned for one of those shows. I don't know which one it was, possibly X Factor. Um, and she came in, she was arguably 50 times more rude than you were. She screwed up a piece of paper, threw it at the judges and said she wouldn't be treated like a number and she'd been kept waiting and this was disgraceful. And then she really didn't react well when the judges said that she was scary and couldn't sing. Now, I'm not saying that this is linked. In fact, I'm going to great pains to say there is no link at all. But years later, she committed suicide. Um, mm. People that knew her said that it was well known uh, amongst her family and friends that she had always battled with mental health issues. Mm -hmm. Were you exploited? Um, no. Did they see something but in I you? I think that I was exploited when they, when they went into the toilet. I mean, that really like was, that was so insane. Like, can you imagine? So, mm. yeah, I mean, ultimately, did they exploit me on that and what they aired on TV? Only to the extent that, gosh, only to the extent that um, they didn't pay me. And, you know, when they told me to come back. No, they never pay me anything. And they told me to come back. They told me to fly to New York or dr drive to New York. They didn't give me no money for that. And, you know, like I go to New York, I spend the whole day and, you know, they take me for eight hours, they bust into the bathroom stall and then the tape disappears. They actually aired a little bit of it in the Milwaukee episode. And it, w it was just like, okay, well, like I, I was creating this content for them and, you know, it wasn't for me, you know, it was for them. Did it do me any serious harm? No. No, it didn't do me any serious harm. And am I worried about this being associated with my name, you know, for the rest of my life? No. In a lot of those comments, you'll see that a lot of people are suggesting that they shouldn't have been as harsh on you because clearly they can do whatever this, they want but this, you know? a lot of people a lot of people are suggesting that you're either on the spectrum or have anxiety or some sort of mental health issue does it surprise you I didn't people have a mental health like issue and I, i'm not on the spectrum so far as i know like uh i have a little adhd uh but i don't take any like adderall or i've never taken any um I might have obsessive compulsive disorder, but as far as being like uh, on the spectrum for autism or something like that, I, I don't think I qualify in that category. People would be curious what you're up to these days. Are you, you know, you, what are you up to these days? You're, you're still creating, still producing. Yeah, work. I've been working on this. Uh, what amazing, do you do for a living? Um, yeah, well, I mean, I do a lot. Uh, you know, I was. Uh, 
uh, I've been working on this, this, this new um, opera that I wrote and I'd love it if we could just take a, take a second to listen to a few, a few seconds of it. We'd love right. to. I was floating lucidly in the warm, white, viscous bath that was a pool of horses come, my penis. It was slowly floating away from my body. And let me tell you, it was such a relief to have it gone. I said to my father, Papa, Daddy, it's me, your golden boy. He said, shut up, Tobias. I'm sick of you and your stories about horse cum. Horse cum isn't good. It's disgusting. I said, you don't know anything, Daddy. Barkeep, where are you? Yes, monsieur. A handsome, mustached man's head slowly emerged from the horse cum bath. There you are, I said. It's, it's truly a story of heartbreak. Uh, it goes on. There's more to it. But um, it's sort of a work in progress, if you know what I mean. How do you make a crust these days, Andrew? What what do you do for work? Well, I do, uh, you know, I'm a computer programmer and uh, uh-huh. I uh, play piano at a bar. And, nice. Uh, Are you still single? Do you have kids? Are you married? Yeah, I guess, uh, you know, I have girl girlfriend. So, uh, you know, no. I don't have kids yet. Um, I like you know, I'd like to have kids, but uh, no. M- moving swiftly on, because clearly that the public and the private are quite distinct. <laughs> but have you ever met any of your uh, fans, the people that have watched it? People approach you in public. This is fascinating. What are they right? saying to you? So, like, okay, so like, I've gotten a lot of attention from people online, but in terms of meeting one of these people who knew me from my audition, who hit me up online in person. It only happened one time. And it was that year after the audition. I happened to be back in, in Michigan and there was this girl who was writing me and you know I linked up with her and when I finally did, she looked totally different from the way she looked online and she was really drunk and I was pretty drunk too and we wound up spending the night together and... Uh, when I woke up, my entire leg was covered in her pee. And that experience was so weird. Like, it wasn't like we didn't, like, you know, copulate or anything like that. It wasn't like that. It was just, we were just sort of drunk, and maybe like made out or something and passed out. But it made, that was, it was like I got skunked. And I really felt like, you know, this is such a thing where it's like, I need to divide my personal life from, you know, like what's out there. Like, I felt like that was kind of like an omen or something. Let me reflect this back to you. You, you met up with somebody who was writing to you. Yeah, she was like an alcoholic. And you somehow, you somehow woke up maybe in her bed with her pee over your leg. All over me, yeah. You know, there was a time when I was doing this thing where I was writing songs for people you know, if they reached out to me, um, I'd write a song for them and sing it and they pay me for it. Uh And that was cool because I will say that like back then I had a great little scheme for like publicity stunt, but I didn't really know how to write a good song. I think that going through that period of realizing that I wasn't very good at it, and trying to improve it was kind of a nice period of self-edification in that way. And uh, I had stalkers. Yeah, but like, I was on TV for seven minutes. What do you mean you had stalkers? Oh, yeah. I had this weird guy who was following me around Boston, spying on me, calling me, like being like, I see you in the coffee shop. What kind of underwear are you wearing? Like, oh, it was brutal. <laughs> Yeah, it was awful. And, oh, yeah, I had, like, it was just, like, yeah, and that was for seven minutes on television. So, Andrew, given everything that you've spoken about today, and thank you so much for the conversation, I've really, really enjoyed hearing the context around this famous viral clip. If you had your time all over again, would you walk into that audition room? Yeah, sure. I mean... To be honest with you, 
um, it would probably be completely different. But you know, like, I, I, like in the in the way that what I did was not entirely planned. I mean, but you know, the only reason why is that you know, like when I play piano at this bar, like you know, I the the gig starts and I just I do. I, I deliver the goods. Like I, there's a certain element of entertainer in me that I feel like comfortable in that zone. It's been a great pleasure talking to you. Thank you, my friend. Okay. Good to talk to you too, man. Good to talk to you too. I hope you enjoy, you know, the rest of your day in uh, Oz. Hey, no, I really, guys, wait a minute. You know, you're being really vicious here. I'm Seriously. sorry. I really don't like you. I, I have I a very strong God. reaction but to I, you. I don't know why. But I'm not think... judging you in this way. You can judge me all you want. I just, right. I don't like your attitude. See, this is why we're getting all well there. You can judge quiet you on the pen there. You're being awful, right, Victoria? You need a spanking. You need a spanking. That's what you need. Hold on a second. What are we talking about? Spanking is very naughty. Car, yes or no? 